Now it's time to talk about classifications. And there are many different things that we need to discuss today. The first one is perceptron. The first thing in classification that I'm going to discuss with you guys is perceptron. I mean, I guess most of you kind of, you never heard of perceptron, but I'm going to explain what it is. So before that, and we don't read the regressions and let's see what is the definition of a classification. The only difference is that, remember for the regressions, you have X and Y, it's a supervised learning process. In order to build up the models, we have to have input and output as a training data set. So when you have models out of it, and ever have new data points, and I wanna estimate it, predict. That's the, the purpose of regressions. And for classification, it's the same as supervised. So we have to have X and Y paired input and outputs at the same time. Those are the same because it's a, it's a supervised learning process. But the difference is that instead of for regressions, we have continuous value of X and continuous Y. Remember like X and Y, we have, I mean, any, this kind of relations. But for classifications, the, value, the Y is discrete value. That's the only difference between regression and classification. For classifications, why we do have discrete value. We want to develop the discrete, discrete, uh, classification algorithm to determine which class in the new input should fall into. So we have discrete values of y, and we, once we're done with building up the classification models, whenever we have new inputs, we want to estimate it, what kind of class that we have what kind of discrete value that we're going to have. So start with, again, it's a start with the simple, let's start with the simplest model. For classification, the simplest case that we can have is binary classifications. We have only like Y value. We have only like two classes. Later on, we're gonna look at the multi-class classification problems. But let's start with the simplest case, simplest model case that we have. We can say zero or one as a label of output of Y, or we can say minus one and one. It, it, it doesn't matter. It really is, it's just labels. So we call it, it is binary classifications, binary classifications because we have only binary outcomes. <clears throat> in in we're gonna learn the perceptrons and support vector machines. We call it SVM. And the last method is, is logistic regressions. So these we're gonna have the topics that I'm going to cover in these lectures under classification topics. Okay, so let's see uh data set that we have so we have x of x of one x of two let me show you this x of one and x of two and suppose we have some data points here how many class we have two class this one says c of one and c of two i mean c of zero and c of one you, you can say like the C of zeros and C of one or C of one and C of two. I mean, this is how you're gonna assign the outputs. It, so it doesn't matter. So if you look at X, probably like X of one, X of two, 
and y's, like say here is zeros. And another point I'm gonna have probably this is one. This is like data set that you're gonna have as a as an input and as an output. Now your input is two dimensions, right? So I use here, of course, I, I, you know, I use different colors to represent different outputs. Probably like black is represent, let me see, is class one and blue is class zeros. I use different colors to represent different label of outputs. I wanna see if we have new data points, whether these new data points belongs to blue or black, blue or black. This is too obvious. I mean, I guess it's like everybody agrees that it's probably very close to blue. How we do that? We're gonna build up classification boundaries like that. Whether this data point is on on this side, on this side, it really depends on if that's this data points related to on on this side. Probably, I'm gonna say that this this data points is belongs this data belongs to blue. If new data points over here and the other side, probably I'm gonna say black. So what I wanna do in the classification is the given training data data set. I'm gonna build up classification boundary first. That's the model for classifications. Once we do have a models, new observations or new data points, I wanna see whether that is for the binary case, I wanna see whether new data points and then here on the other side. That's what we're gonna do. So let's think about the perceptron first. And the example that I wanna have is, uh, let's say you, we are working at a bank and whenever you have new customer, your job is you have to, the customers come to bank to borrow monies. And we have to decide it. We have to decide whether we're going to approve or deny the customer's request. If we believe that is the, the customer is, uh, has the ability to return the money, it's probably we're gonna approve the credits. Otherwise, we, we have to deny it, their request. So let's see, suppose we have some customers and what kind of the factors that you want to consider it? What kind of factors? In order to you, you, you have some kind of proof or whether you're gonna approve or deny the credits. You're gonna consider what kind of the factor, what kind of, what kind of uh, attributes in the mathematical, I'm gonna say X of one, X of two, or X of D, but actually it's in the, what kind of candidates for attributes? What kind of factors that we have to consider it? Any ideas? Any suggestions? Suppose you are working at bank and you have new customers. What about the job? Do you believe that it's related to? In order to make your right decisions? What about, what about like height or weight? Do you think it's related to? What about genders?
like how old? You guys know what, what I'm trying to do? So that's probably, I'm gonna say this is the for X of one and X of two, X of three, like things like that. We're gonna have more than that. So out of customers, you have to extract some kind of attribute. We call it, these are features. Based on your experience, based on your knowledge, Probably, I guess, I mean, in common sense, like in order to write, in order to make right decisions, probably job is related to, it's gonna give us a lot of information. Height and weight, I'm not sure. Gender, I'm not sure. Age, probably, I don't know, right? But you have some kind of, knowledge on it or experience. And another thing is that we have to, these are the given information or given features out of input, or we, you, you, can, you guys can say features or input. And the simplest model that we can think of is linear models. And I'm not sure how much that I need to wait on it. Wait on it. More than that. So these are the weight. How much that we, that we supposed to consider it? When I multiply it and do some kind of summations for entire, that's kind of how I wrote it. Each bank, they might have what kind of feature they were supposed to consider it and the corresponding weights they might have from their historical experience. And maybe like, I don't know, maybe this one is 10 and like this one is like one and weight is my, I don't know, it's, minus one, whatever, genders. And we do this kind of calculations. And if it is greater than like some kind of threshold, I'm gonna approve it. And otherwise I'm going to deny it. That's kind of the, the simplest model that we can think of. The simplest model that we can, think. it's linear, I mean, linear combinations with different weights on the, each feature. So let's formalize it. I mean, here is this, I wanna see whether I can compute this and make comparison between the computed values with some kind of threshold and or we can just take minus on it and put it into sine functions. This is, this is not, this is different from sine. The sine function is like that. If the, 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 the values, the argument is greater than here is positive, that means it's gonna have one. It's negative is minus one. Okay, that's the definition of sine functions. And this is, this is some kind of threshold, this unknown value. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna assign another parameters or weight, and this is unknown, so I can just have positive. We're gonna have negative values, so it doesn't matter. And so that's where we at right now. Uh, I'm gonna introduce artificial coordinate. So I will say here one as a, as a omega zeros. Then we can, have compressed expressions like that. So 
remember this one is i is starting from i start starts from one it starts from zeros so now this is simplified the now what we can do is whenever we do have customers compute this one and check whether this is this value is positive or negative if positive we're going to approve if it's negative we're going to deny it so that's the we can compute it in a vector form in a vector form so again it's omega is like omega zeros and omega ones and x is x zeros and x one things like that so we do omega transpose x which is in a product it's in a product and psi And the idea is that each bank might have omegas. But for machine learnings, it's totally different. We're gonna look at these problems in a totally different perspective. We have previous customers Right. Some of them was able to return, some of them not. We have those kind of historical data set. We want to find out proper value of omega. So instead of predefined value of omegas from our experience or our judgment, just ignore those kind of thing the we just want to build up omegas out of data set we want to learn omegas from the all the historical data set that we have that's the different perspective that's the perspective of machine learnings or data analytics i want to find out the omegas instead of i predefined omegas do you see the difference? Or is that we have no ideas on which factors are important or which factors are not important? If we have, if we learn correctly from the data set, probably for important factors we might have bigger values, larger value of omegas. And some of them like, say it turns out this one is not like, has nothing to do with the, the, the well, credit. Probably this is gonna be almost zeros. We wanna learn right omegas from the data set that we have. So let's do. So perceptrons uh, are gonna work for the linearly separable data set like that let me show you go back to okay let's 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 talk about this one first now i'm again it's a simplified it now say suppose we have only two factors two features that we have then and weights we're going to have only two right and we are this is the that we have to think about it and let me see this one, let me, omegas, we have omega transpose x and we have a constant terms as well. And this is the equation that we have. Again, the same as this one. And this is linear equation. In two dimensional space, let me see x of one and x of two. And if we set g of x, if set is equal to zeros, that means there's some straight lines in two dimensional space like that. So if you find all the solutions, all the data points is on top of this uh, straight line over there. Let me show you, I'm going to, uh, let me see, sign the distance and this H sign. Right. 
Okay, so let's see. Because I think I have only five minutes left and let me show you. Okay, let me think about the meaning of omega, geometric meaning of omegas. Suppose we have two data points, P and Q on decision line over here. Say any points P and Q, that means we satisfy this because the P and Q is, just, is on top of that, the three lines, then we can write it down omega naught plus omega transpose p is equal to zeros, omega naught plus omega transpose q equal to zeros, right? And then we do subtractions on it, and omega transpose p minus q is equal to zeros. Then p minus q vectors is like this one or that way. And we do omega transpose, that's is a omega transpose p minus q is zero, that means in a product zeros, that means omega vectors, omega vectors is perpendicular with P minus Q. I said the P minus P and Q is any data points on top of a straight line. So it's same as these vectors. And these omegas and the line are perpendicular. So whenever it's the given omegas and omega transpose x, means, that means you have to, these are the equation that we have. So remember that omega is perpendicular. Omega is perpendicular with the here. So going back to the original problem, omega, this one was the weight of each features, right? So going back to this problem, say, suppose you have these data points and in order to separate it, probably this one is the right decision boundary. And if you have decision boundaries, we know that omega is perpendicular. The physical meaning of the original meaning of omega is the weight on each features, which is the how important. So let me see if for the binary classification problems, say suppose we have these data points, I can draw like this. This is classification boundaries and your omega is probably, I'm not sure, but these two directions. The omega is the, if you have that, classification boundaries, we can find out the omegas. And going back to the original problems, the omega was that omega one, x of one, omega two, x of two, things like that. And these are the weight, the coefficient of each features, how important for each features. That's what we did is that we learned feature importance from the data set. That's what we're gonna do in the classifications and start from the perceptron here. Okay, so, I mean, this somehow now is from the classification problems. I, I use a bank as a examples, like customers, whether we're going to approve or deny it. Remember that examples and remember the meaning of the features and remember the meaning of the omegas, the coefficient and transform it into, into like geometric sense, like here in, in how do you plot it in like either two or n dimensional space. In the binary classification, we're gonna have two clusters or group of data points. And I'm gonna have classification boundaries or classification models 
from that one, I can define it the omegas. That's the meaning. That's the 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 coefficient that we can find out it. Okay, so that's kind of the very brief introduction for the classifications. I'm going to stop here next time. I'm going to show you how you find how to define it, omegas and things like that in n-dimensional space. We're gonna have further discussions on it. Okay, so let me, I'm going to stop here.